let's create a new material so by going to create redshift redshift material and put this material on the shader board so this is what we get to have so if i fire out this we're going to have um this as the starting point so we're going to open up this material shader i already have my maps for that so i'm going to bring up the map for the flooring so this is a pocket wooden flooring so i need a diffuse um, glossy and also the normal for this so i'll drag this over here so as soon as i do that let's quickly bring this and fire up this so we have all these maps so this doesn't have to doesn't really shouldn't have a problem it shouldn't have a problem with this so for the diffuse we need to first of set up so the, the thing with this is they have the same size so i need to work with the diffuse to set everything then i'm just going to use that same value for ever so i'm just taking this to the diffuse color and this gives me how it's going to look like so for the moment i'm going to bring down the reflection just for me to see this diffusion so right now i will see that um the scale of this um wood is too much so you know what to do we're just going to bring up a scalar user so we're going to bring scalar user data you know that that is used to scale this value so we're going to scale or we could actually decide to forego for this for something else so we could just use triplanar so since we are working with patterns so i think triplanar will be better to use so i'll just use my triplanar plug this into the input section and to the texture texture image x then bring this here so we're going to have this so we can use this triplanar to change the size also by going to the scale so if we come to the scale bring this to two you are going to see what happens to the scale of um, this object right here so let's just wait for it to load up so you can see what that scale does if i bring this scale to four you see what is happening right here so you can see that so let's bring this up to 100 so you see what this, I, I don't really like what this is giving me. So let's change this back to one. So instead of um this, I think well let's plug this into every other part and see what effect we get. If it doesn't really help, we're going to we might try to check that scalar and see which one gives us the best result. So all you need to do is just check what results you're having. If it's fine, then you go with that. If not, you look for the, the better option, okay? So we come here, mm, let's take this into this section here. Let's plug this into this. So we're back to this default then we'll plug this into the scale so it's going to turn brown because the scale is zero so if we take this one this is back to the default so let's take this to four and let's go now i think um this is too much so let's try three all right so you can see i think this is better than the um, triplanar in this case so in this case you can notice that the triplanar isn't really give, giving us what we want so uh, we'll go with this scale option so we'll go back to 70 and so once we are done with this scale we know that okay this value is what we're going to use for every other section okay because since they are they have the same 
size so that will help so let's go into this section and bring back the sorry reflection so the reflection is up and also introduce glossy or which is um roughness to this so bring this roughness up there so this is this rough so we work with the glossiness map so we'll come to this glossiness now the thing with the glossiness is that if you notice the kind of material um we are making use of here is we're using roughness but the map we have is glossiness so if we are going to plug this to the roughness channel what we're going to have is going to be an inverse of what we are supposed to have because this um, reads roughness and what we are having is glossiness. So I'm going to show you how to change the representation. So I'll take this to two, so we have that. So if I plug this to the roughness, this is what I'm going to have. This is what I'm going to have. Also, I need to set the scale. Very important, you know, we've changed the scale. So that will help us. So if we bring this scale, drag this also to the scale. So this should work. So you can see that even increasing this roughness value to this, and notice we are not getting this effect. And the reason is because, like I said, this is read inversely to what it should give us so we're going to use ramp node to change that ramp then color correction node so we'll have this put the ramp into the reflection roughness and just let's change this to alt and right click inverse the knob so let's see what this gives us first before we start plugging it into this. So if you have this, this is what this is going to give us. And the actual map, this is what the actual map gave us. If you are to plug the actual map into this, which is this. So the actual map is this dark. And for the roughness, we need to invert this, uh, invert this rather, so we have a kind of um, a grayish tone to this. That is why I'm using the ramp node. So we're going to use the ramp node to change this up to the inverse of what we are seeing here. So once we are done setting this, we can now plug it into the roughness channel. So that's so we bring this over to this surface. And this is what we get to have. So we can start changing this. The white is too white, so we're going to bring the white down to this grayish tone. Yes, and this dark, if we push this in, we will start to see this effect, which is more going to the reverse of what we had. So I just want to have, I want to go to the grayish tone and then have this a little bit. You can see the difference between this and that. See the difference. So for when you're working with roughness and um, glossiness, what you need to put in mind is that glossiness map gives us um, a darker shade of a grayscale value. So more like Darker gray is kind of darker compared to the gloss, the roughness. So the glossiness is darker and the roughness is going towards a little bit of a grayish uh, tone. So that's the difference. So we are bringing this. Let's try this and squash this in. So I think um, we will make do with this and plug that into the roughness. So if you see this now, this should give us what we're looking for. So you can see as so what we have here. See what the glossiness is giving us. But by the time you tweak this up and you're having the actual representation that you want. So if you want to 
polish this even more, make it more glossy. You can just work with this ramp node and just trip that, and that should give you the effect you're looking for. So right now, the next thing we're going to do is to plug in the normal map. So we're going to bring this also over to the scale. So we have the actual scale affecting all of them. So if I change this value, it affects the three maps. So I don't have to go back and start scaling it. So we bring in our bump map over here and plug that into this input and take the output over to the input of the RS material to the overall, then you have bump. So this is what we're gonna have. So you can start to see, so if we bring this up to 120, so this is without the bump. So everything is so smooth. So by the time you introduce the bump to it, you have um, this coming up. So you can use the height scale to determine how the bump goes up or down. So if I make this two, it's going to be a lot bumpy than you had with one and five. Let's just go over board to five, you see what you get to have. So if this is the effect you're looking for, you want to have that definition of the pump crisis, then you can add that. And if you don't want too much of it, you still want the glossiness to show more and a little bit of the pump, you can just bring this down below one. So you just have a little bit of the pump introduced to this and could have that. So that's um, how to do this. Like I said, this is not, you don't really have um, so much to do with um, this wood texture. So if you want to, for instance, go overboard and add a little bit of realism to this by adding scratches and all that, then that will be done under the bump section. So I'm going to introduce another bump, which would help me to do that so if i for instance go to my texture so i have um this texture this bump texture that i scratches rather that i made that i have rather I'm not made so i'm going to bring this as a scratch i used this in my last tutorial so if i drag this over here and that scratch will come up. We can also use that as bump and then mix them together. So if we come to the bump blender, we come here and drag another bump here. So this is going to be the next bump and this is the first bump. So we'll just um, blend them together. So that will help. So let's just wait for this. So that's why we just, I should have just paused this. All right, so what I'm going to do is to plug this into the scale. This is scale, sorry. Sorry about that. Plug this in the texture input, yeah. Then this bump can also be added into this bump blender. So if we bring this to the first um, base this is going to be the base and this is going to be the layer input so now for the layer input we have um the blend width to use for that so i think let's just um before that let's bring this guy over to the surface so i can know the way the surface the way this looks like before we start. So, so if I bring this up, let's try 120 here. Bring this up and see what we get to have. Then we can start changing this. Okay, I do. I think we don't actually need the pump. We just need this texture over to this surface. That's what we need, not the pump. So bring this over to this. So this will give us the actual um, roughness. So if we like this, we could just go with this. And if you want this to be reduced, you could just, you know, you could just bring this 
copy this down here and change this value so maybe this is going to be four if you want this to go even smaller so we'll come here change this to the scale so we'll see what we have so we can already start seeing this so i think i'll go with this with this scale we can start seeing that now using these two value i can separately change the scale to this and that so so once we are done with that we'll bring this back over here and we are going to bring this blender into so bring everything backwards so we're going to take the blender into the pump input so we're going to start seeing the effect so we are not seeing any scratch right now because the blend width is zero so what this blend width does is that when you come to zero it gets deflected towards the base um, bump so it gives that beams, base bump more um, preference over the other one so if i go to one it goes to this scratch so that's what it looks like so you need to look for a way to balance them so if i come to 0 0.5 it goes in between so you can start seeing it it goes in between but what i would do is um you can start seeing what this effect is giving us so you see this so if you feel that this scratch is too much there are two things you can do actually you can actually either come towards zero to reduce the scratch you have here or you could just come to the scratch to the bump um, height of the scratch and reduce this value so if you want to keep this um, 0 0.5 in between you can always just come to the bump map of the scratch and reduce it so if i bring this up see that you get more scratch the pronunciation of scratch is high and if you bring this down to 0 0.3 there about scratch get reduced until if you come to zero you don't have any scratch anymore because the scratch is not had adding any any input to this so if we try this point four so you see the effect, I think one, two should do. I don't want too much of that cooking through. So this is um, what we get to have with the scratch. And I think this is fine. I think the scratch might be too much. So let's bring this even down on 0 0.5 just a little bit of it we don't want too much it's just you can i can see some detail here and yeah so i think this is fine like i said in my last tutorial and like i always say try to be subtle with what you do you don't have to go overboard and start adding too much of this just a little bit of it is enough to sell the realism so i think um that is there for that so um i think i will just do a final render and show you what i have let me increase this a little bit the normal bump so we have that normal bump poking through this okay so yeah we're having this so let me quickly do a final render to this and let's see what we have all right so you can see what we have um have those scratches um i think i kind of like them even though i feel they are still too much you can see them there so um that is how you would do a wood flooring and the wooden floor and then in the next one we're going to look at how to do a concrete so if you feel this was helpful please do um, like and subscribe if you are new to my channel and i'll get you in the next one do have a wonderful day and god bless you bye